Hello everyone, this is Austin Weave, just making another video. Uh, this one is based on trials and tribulations. Now what a trial is, is it's when a convicted felon is brought before the judge and all the evidence is brought with him and the judge looks at the evidence and makes a decision on whether or not he walks out innocent or whether he goes to jail guilty. Okay, So that's what a trial is. And what a tribulation is, this is actually really cool, is uh, it refers to a grape, okay? And it's basically, you take a barrel, you cut it in half, and then you fill it with grapes, and then you have someone walk in it. That process, uh, what the grapes are going through is called tribulation. It's having everything in them squeezed out of them, okay? Now, if you put the two together, trials and tribulations, it's having everything squeezed out of you as a human being but hold on, just hang in there because the judge is watching and he's making his decision on whether or not you walk out innocent or go guilty. So that's what trials and tribulation means combined. That is a really cool definition, but I honestly think that there is no better book in the Bible to have uh, trials and tribulations brought up than the book of Job, okay? So uh, we're gonna skip the trials and tribulations that he actually went through. We're gonna go to Job 1, verse 6 uh, to 12. Okay, now there was a day when the sons of God came into the presence of the Lord, and Satan came along with them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on the earth like him. He is a blameless and upright man who fears God and always turns away from evil. Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has? On every side, you have blessed the works of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to your face. And God said to the uh, God said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand. So, this is uh, just basically a really weird situation that happens. I mean, it's almost like they're bidding on whether or not they can, uh, whether or not they can deceive Job, right? Like God wasn't asked um, for Job; God offered him up. Okay, that's something that's really crazy. Uh, you know, he's just living a blameless lifestyle, and then God offers him to Satan. It says, "Here's Job. Try and knock him off. Try and." You know, confuse him. It's not going to work. That's crazy. But you know, this this part of the Bible, uh, this part of the Book of Job, really does make us feel really, really, really small. Like, really, like God made um, almost a bet with Satan. Like, that doesn't make any sense to us, right? That's not the God that I read about in Sunday school. Well, you know what? This is the God of the Bible, though, right? He has that authority. He can do that. But here's the thing. If you read about the trials afterwards, it's like, man, can God do that? Well, yeah, it kind of looks like it because he's doing it, right? He's giving everything that he has into Satan's hands. But the thing is, um, <coughs> and, you know, at some point, Job actually does stop and say, God, what have I done to deserve this? And God doesn't actually um, apologize for anything. He just goes, do you want to run the universe? That's incredible, right? But here's the thing. Uh, I feel kind of like, with this book, it kind of makes me feel like I'm in the movie Ant-Man, right? You know, have you ever seen that movie where you know, they have uh, Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket at the end of the movie, they're having this fight and they're on this little train track. 
maybe oh they're having just this epic fight and whatever and, you know yellow jacket shoots his laser hits a bridge collapses in just this horrible scene and then you zoom out to regular size and all that happens is just that's it just a little thing happens right and and you know like they're fighting they're fighting they're fighting all of a sudden the train jumps off the tracks there's this huge catastrophic accident and then you zoom out to normal size and it just the train just goes dead and falls over it's like almost like nothing happens right it's so it's so funny just to shrink back down to size and then to see what it's like from the other perspective right and what i think a lot of us tend to forget is that there's another perspective going on when we're going through problems in our lives. Like there's another perspective going on. There's the eternal perspective. There is God's perspective going on. And a lot of us tend to miss that. Um, we tend to think about our small little problems as being huge, right? And they could be huge, right? Um, I grew up in cancer care. I saw a lot of problems there. But... You know, th these things looked huge. These things looked massive. But at the same time, um, to God, it's just the train jumped off the tracks, fell over. It's easy to fix, right? So what I want you guys to do, honestly, is just um, don't lose your integrity. Uh, you might feel like as a Christian you have everything being squeezed out of you. But hang on, hold on, because the judge is watching and he's making a decision based on how you act in that moment, right? Are you going to act as a Christian or are you going to act as otherwise, right? So my encouragement to you guys is if you're going through a hard time at all, right? It could be something small like a cat died or it could be something big like you were diagnosed with cancer or something. No matter what it is. Just hang on, right? Hang on because the judge is watching and he's making a decision. Okay, thank you.